Isn't it just fascinating how we completely miss red flags right at the beginning of a relationship? Today I'm going to be sharing with you five red flags that you might have overlooked, ones that can save you so much heartache later. My name is Dr. Amankor. I've helped countless people recognize the signs but also heal from trauma. At the end of this video, you'll have a toolkit to navigate the early stages with clarity. Maybe you're starting a new relationship or you're reflecting on past ones. Understanding these red flags will empower you to create the connection that you truly deserve moving forward. Lesson number one. One common red flag is when people make grand gestures or it seems really amazing and fairy tale like but there's no consistency. There's no consistency afterwards so they might take you to a lovely restaurant but they don't talk to you they're not communicating and they only appear again when there's another grand gesture it could be that they invite you to a big event but between those events they rarely communicate with you this could be someone that values experiences or trying to woo you with experiences over genuine connection it can even be something subtler it might not be they spend a lot of money but it might be that they send you all these love songs, but they don't actually communicate with you. Even though they have these grand gestures, the lack of really understanding you shows they have a lack of genuine interest in you. The actionable advice here is always reflect on the consistency. Is there regular, meaningful contact? Just everyday events. If not, have an open conversation to clarify their intentions before you invest any more time into this. It's okay to say, no, I don't want to invest time moving forward. It's about saving your future time, not just basing it on the fact that you've already invested so much time. Lesson number two, if their words don't match their actions, this is a massive point. It's so easy to be swayed by people's promises if their actions don't support their words or if you see their actions cause a lot of chaos around you. They're fixing some of the problems that they've created and they're using all these words but actually their actions aren't fitting or they invest time when it suits them but not really taking into account what's important for you and what you need. That shows interested in the idea of a relationship because in order to relate to someone, they need to be able to notice and be aware of what you need in that relationship as well as what they need. And this is really important if you're worried you're in a toxic type relationship, in a relationship where they're love bombing. So they are literally love bombing you so you love them. And as soon as that happens, they stop love bombing to that same extent, then the devaluation occurs. So all they're trying to do is they're investing in you until you like them, and then they switch off. They're like, oh, I've got you now. Um, now I can start abusing you. The actionable advice here would be, while words are essential, good to hear encouraging words, it's consistent action that really shows us commitment. And remember, words are cheap in some ways, but really, truly to understand what someone's thinking and what someone's feeling is through their actions. Because if you look at how we are made up as human beings, it takes a thought and a feeling that moves us into an action. If they're not actually doing the action, that means they're not really thinking the thing that they are saying. So the thoughts and their feelings need to match up. And if you can see that in their actions, then it makes sense. But it's got to be not just big things. It's also got to be the everyday things. Because when you get into a relationship, it's not the big things that continue. It's actually the everyday things that continue. So we want to find someone that is connected to us on an everyday level. So the actionable advice here would be to create journal entries. Each time you notice that you're disconnected rather than connected, because we can go into this idealized, you know, feeling. And, but if you can actually note down every time you're 
the disconnecting, you can start to see a pattern. And then you can see, is that important for me longer term? Because if it is, then you've got a deal breaker here. And then maybe you decide, talk to them and see if they can change. And if they slip back into their old habits, you know that this isn't going to work. Lesson number three, some people really want intense experiences, but they're not interested in like an ongoing connection. Tense relationships are fast. And that is a massive red flag. They're all and then nothing. One of my clients had a relationship where they had all these elaborate, beautiful, romantic gestures, but then in between those, they weren't communicating. That shows you they're seeking excitement. They're seeking that, you know, love bombing phase rather than a committed relationship to really understand you and actually really get to know one another. They're not really open to really knowing and understanding you and seeing if this relationship would work. So check in with yourself regularly. Are you equally invested? It's not the first phase that you need to focus on. It's the phase after that initial honeymoon period. If not, then you need to set some boundaries of what you expect and what you need for connection. If you've had relationships where toxic relationship pattern, it might be that you actually need to go deeper into your relationship patterns and start releasing some of that trauma and the pattern itself. I'll invite you to check out my monthly membership. Right now, you can try it for free for 30 day trial and each month we'll be meeting and you can ask me anything. And then every Monday after you'll receive a prompt to help you on your healing journey, something that you can practically implement into your week so that you can start healing and really looking at your relationship patterns moving forward. So if that sounds of interest to you, please do look into the description and you can see the link there. So lesson number four, they might genuinely lack curiosity about your values of what you want, how you want to live, but are more interested in your vulnerabilities or your stories of how you were treated in the past and all your trauma. When someone is really serious in a relationship, they are naturally curious about are your values going to match? I, what are you about? What are your beliefs? What are your values? Yes, we do explore relationships, but Normally, it's a massive red flag when someone during the early stages wants to know everything about your previous relationships and all about your trauma because they're just looking to see how they can find all your vulnerabilities, potential ways of using those to control you in some way. What you're looking for is actually building a life together moving forward. And in order to do that, the most important thing that you have to look for is are your values aligned? Can you build a life together based on those values? Is there respect for each other's values? That's massive. If they appear to be so fallen in love with you based on, and they don't totally know you, but they're kind of blown away by you, maybe your beauty, maybe what you've achieved. Then what you're talking about is someone that's got like a CV or like a checklist. If someone has fallen in love with you really fast, they have a tick list and they've got an imagination of what that means you are rather than truly falling in love with you because that takes time. What you want to uncover in that scenario is Number one, that is a huge red flag in itself. You really do need to slow the relationship down so that you can get to know one another. Number two, it's important to know what could be on that tick list that has made them fall in love with you so quickly without being flattered too much by it. Just get curious. Why are they falling in love with me so quickly? I wonder what's made them do that. Reason for this is they might have created a fantasy of who you are rather than who you really are. And you don't want to live up to somebody else's fantasy. You want to be in a relationship with someone that truly loves you for who you are, not some crazy fantasy, because you might not be able to live up to that fantasy. It might not be realistic. And then you'll be in a relationship where you always feel like you're not good enough because you're not meeting the fantasy that they've created in their own head. Remember, genuine interest isn't about the big moments of this idealization. You want to be in a relationship where they love 
all the imperfections about you as well as the perfections. Because in reality, we as human beings, we make mistakes and we only learn from our mistakes. And you want to be in a relationship where making mistakes is is a good thing because you'll be feeling free to express and be who you are and to live and learn as you go along. This is such an important thing. Otherwise, we can't really build our resilience or our confidence moving forward to really strive and be the best version of ourselves. Find out if they're really invested in the real you rather than this fantasy. You don't want to go down that route of having to be someone for somebody else. Lesson number five, if they have an inconsistency in closeness, there could be a partner who just wants to feel close to you, wants to be intimate with you, but not really interested in building a lasting connection. A weekend away in a romantic, beautiful city, but they're not really there for true intimacy, which is really understanding each other, having some connection with each other. It's those moments where we really build true intimacy, where we can feel safe with another person. While spontaneous fun can be exciting and it's all great, it doesn't always signify genuine closeness or long-term potential. So the thing here is you've got to understand what you're moving towards. What's your values? What are you, what is your North Star? And what is it that you need in a relationship? People need consistency. It's, It's necessary for the brain to be able to function and to be healthy, to know that there's consistency in relationships. It's vital so that you can grow and evolve and be the best version of yourself. And then on top of that, you need to make sure that your values align. So if you really want to have a tick list of what's important, one is consistency in behavior in lots of different ways. Second is, are your values aligned? Those two things are the most important thing. And then you want to make sure that your interactions are aligned with those values. Ultimately, recognizing these red flags is really about aligning with your values, your values with your relationship choices. Remember, the right relationship is waiting for you, but you're going to have to say no to the wrong ones to get to the right one. And saying no will get you closer and closer to the right relationship. The most important relationship that you have is with yourself. So always trust and believe in yourself and be with people around you that will allow you to trust and believe in yourself. Sending you so much love. Till next time.